what I figured I'd do today is just kind of talk a little bit about the conditioner. Mm. Again, we hear a lot in the industry, so many rinks out there, mm. so many people, and all they keep talking about is, hey, my ice is doing this, my ice is doing that. And right. sometimes they're not sure what they're looking for when they're trying to diagnose a lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, when we look at the conditioner, this is kind of the beast of the machine. When the conditioner hits that ice, mm -hmm. There's so many factors and so many variables that are going to make a perfect sheet or it's going to make a very poor sheet. So one of the big ones, again, is wavy ice. Yes. What's going to cause wavy ice? Well, the first thing I identify is speed. The operator's driving too fast. And if you are driving too fast, you're going to get that bumpiness, which is going to create wavy ice. Correct. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the hardware, specifically for your blade. Is the hardware tightened properly? Do you have loose hardware? Are you inspecting that? You just can't change a blade once a week and trust that your hardware is still in its proper 20 pound torque. Might, something might have happened, might have loosened off. So those are the first couple things that I would be asking the customer uh, if they uh, have wavy ice, is how fast are you driving? And are you making sure you check your hardware on your blade to make sure your uh, lock washers, your nuts are uh, still uh, tight at 20 pound torque? Just the basic walk around of the machine is always gonna be a crucial piece. I mean, there's a lot of times where individuals may say they don't have the time to walk around their machine because they're just going from one sheet to the next sheet, from one sheet to the next sheet. So they're not really paying attention to those things. So, mm -hmm. you know, those quick little diagnostics are definitely gonna be something that's gonna help them. So right. again, speed. When you're on a 500 series, there's kind of an area of, of give where you can find that perfect speed. Again, how you govern your machine to your foot. On a 400 series, obviously it's a little different because you're just ramping up those RPMs. You got to take them up to full. You have to figure out on that foot pedal where that comfortable position is. So there's a way to cheat on that, if Which we will. Is perfect. Yes. Is the bolt underneath the foot pedal. Exactly. Now we have a certain length of bolt that we put in there, but sometimes where it's a, uh, sitting at, it might be too low and the operator puts the foot all the way down to the post or the bolt and that could end up being eight miles an hour, right? Right. You can take a longer uh, bolt as your post reinstall it and actually install it to the position. And you have to do this where you have open ice and you can test it, where you actually have your foot pedal come down to a certain position knowing, going between blue lines, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, you know you're driving five miles an hour between the blue lines. Between the blue lines. And wherever that pedal is at, that's where you adjust your post or bolt up to that position. And that's perfect, yeah. right? That's perfect. Yeah. Again, that's gaining your speed and understanding your speed. Some of the other things that you can look at when it comes to the waviness of your ice. So again, we're talking about your blade, mm -hmm. right? Making sure your blade's actually in the right holes. So you have the proper size blade, a five inch down to a three and a half inch, make sure it's in the right holes. Correct. Again, when you're making sure you have that to your 10 degree, mm -hmm. if there's any issue within that. So again, if your blade is positioned into the wrong spot, too much tension or not enough tension, mm -hmm. you may start to see wavy ice. The other piece, your down pressure. Yes. When you back your machine out and you go to drop, so on a 500 series, you are at? Yeah, you're looking for a gap with a, sti a sticky note on the side of the seat, using a ruler or yardstick. You want a gap between the two lines with the conditioner up and the conditioner down of seven eighths on a 500 series. And on a 400 series? 400 series, I believe it's three quarters of an inch. It's three quarters of an inch. Yes. Yep. With that measurement, when you're backing out onto the ice and you want to make sure when that conditioner touches, you're not slamming that conditioner down. That's a big thing. You don't want to slam that conditioner no. down. Just lowering it down. You want to feel that lift. And make sure you're moving when you lower the conditioner. And make sure you're moving. Yes. So as you're driving and you're slowly putting that conditioner down, you want to feel that lift. If you don't feel that lift, that is your key indication mm -hmm. that you're going to start getting the wavy ice. Mm -hmm because right now then there's no pressure on that conditioner and it's just following whatever it wants to do naturally. And the three things to add to that, if you're not getting the uplift that you're looking for for down pressure, first thing you wanna do is check your tires. Every machine, yep. when you get it from factory, there's a little decal right above the wheel well. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna tell you what that pressure is. Yep. You don't wanna pay attention to the pressure on the tire itself. Mm -hmm. You wanna pay attention to the tire pressure on the side of the machine. Right. If those decals are missing, definitely reach out to your local distributor and they'll happily either replace it for you or just print one off yourself. So that way you can just stick it to the side of the machine and it shows what that pressure should be. And especially nowadays, a lot of machines, once they get to the facility that they belong to, they get them wrapped. And Correct. sometimes who's ever wrapping the machine will wrap right over the uh, safety labels and the stickers and everything that's indicating to the operator how to operate the machine properly 
And if they are covered, you got to get new uh, exactly. labels put on the machine. Yeah. So again, if you don't have the right tire pressure, there's guys out there that they feel that those studs, they want to gain as much out of those studs as possible. They'll lower their pressure. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now you're taking that lift and you're forcing too much lift onto the ice. Yeah. And now you're creating an issue for that conditioner where you're going to force wavy ice mm -hmm. because you're going to start wearing bushings, right? Yep. You're going to start bushings. There you go. That's yep. the other thing. How often do the bushings get checked? They don't. They don't. They don't. And they will wear out over a period of time. They're not a lifelong uh, uh, component of the machine. They do have to be replaced. Yep. And a really good tip for checking your bushings. Again, if you're not going out on the ice right away and you're going to do that down pressure and you don't feel that, just walk up to the machine. If it's already in the upright position, yes. just grab hold. And if there's literally no play there, you've eliminated that one piece sure. of maintenance item that if you're going to be calling anybody, you yep. now know you have your down pressure mm -hmm. and you now know you have no play within the bushings. Yep. So again, now we're going to go back to the blade. The other thing is springs. Springs. Do you have the right tension on your springs? Again, based on the model, if you don't have the right tension on your springs, that's going to create wavy ice for you as well. Yeah. So those are some of the things yeah, you definitely want to be checking. So yeah. now let's look at some chippy ice. Okay. And chippy ice again is when that blade is actually skipping across the surface. Right. What are some of the causes for that? The spring that's attached to the back of the blade holder, the tension, you want to make sure if you can grab onto the blade holder and if you're able to move it with your hand, there's not enough tension. You can adjust this nut on this bolt that's attached to the spring on the inside of the conditioner to take that away, possibly take away the chippiness. That's right. You want to be very cautious when you're actually playing with this spring. Yes. You don't want to just come out randomly and start tightening, trying. No. So you're going to have to spend a little time with that. When you put a wrench onto this bolt, yes. you want to take it and you want to do one full turn. Yes. Go to that bolt, do one full turn. Yes. That's it. Take it back out onto the ice, see what's happening. Mm -hmm. If it's slowly disappearing, do one more full turn. That's it. Yeah. If you have to turn any more than two times, Replace your springs. Yep, replace them. Because then all you're doing at that point is overstretching them, and there's nothing you're going to do at that point. And you're going to wear them out a lot quicker yeah. if you do that. The other thing you can look for, again, we talked about it earlier, is mm -hmm. your blade position. Because if you have a short blade on those front holes, you may only have a little bit of blade sticking through. Yes. So then what you're trying to do now is you're trying to force that blade, that blade bar down, mm -hmm. and you're lifting that conditioner, creating another force tension against. You may still get wavy, but you will get chippy ice. Yeah. The other thing you want to check is your fulcrum arms, yeah. making sure they're operating properly. Putting that down pressure on the bottom of the blade uh, on your height adjustments, because if they're loose, the fulcrum arms, they need to be, they're worn out or need to be replaced due to the fact that you have wavy or chippy ice, yep. then you have to address that as well. So the other thing that we want to kind of talk about too a little bit is greasing. Now, a huge shout out to Marty in the Marty Minute. He definitely talks about that within his 360. Again, every one of these little spots are identified by a little red cap. Red caps must go back. Again, for so many reasons, you want to keep that free of dirt, debris, and everything else. Yes. So when you look at the back of the conditioner, obviously you're going to see your little red dot. You're going to see your little red dot. You're going to see your little red dot. And then there's one that you don't see. And that's the one that you have to reach underneath for. And that one you should be greasing how often? Every day. Every single day. Yep. That one there, again, that's going to help control your blade. And it's going to help it control smoothly and easily. If you're not greasing that and the 16th of an inch thread is bound up because of the dust that gets inside the thread of the screw nut into the brass clevis, and if it gets bound up, you probably won't be turning that. And to add to that, mm -hmm. when you drop that conditioner, if there's snow on the ice and you're having a hard time turning this as you're driving, mm -hmm. you're building snow underneath. Now as you're cranking and you're forcing that, you're actually lifting things up again yeah. because you're building a compact portion underneath that blade. Yeah. Yep. Going back to the blade change process and making sure you do the proper maintenance on your blade holder. Absolutely. Right? So that's the quick rundown on the conditioner. Again, you can reach out to your local distributor. Marty does a great job on the boot camp. You may see me out there doing the boot camp as well. You want to be very cognizant of your machine. You want to pay attention because again, you want to keep those maintenance costs down. And every little thing that you don't do to this machine increases that machine's maintenance cost. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Marty.